it is not just Democrats who are concerned about this president. Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski tells the Anchorage Daily News today she wants the president to resign. And Republican Senator Ben Sass says he would consider any articles of impeachment sent to the Senate. If they come together and have a process, I will definitely consider whatever articles they might move, because as I've told you, I believe the, pre the president has disregarded his oath of office. He swore an oath to the American people to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. He acted against that. What he did was wicked. I want to bring in Olivia Choi. She served in the Trump White House as a Homeland Security and Counterterrorism Advisor to Vice President Pence. Olivia, thank you for being here. I want to start uh, by asking you about the fact that the Vice President was at the White House today for the first time since Wednesday's insurrection. What do you think that was like for him? We've heard reports that Mark Short, was his uh, chief of staff, was banned from entering the building uh, after Wednesday's events. Could have been, couldn't have been more awkward today, I imagine. I'm sure it was incredibly awkward. Uh, quite frankly, I'm surprised they let his motorcade in because Donald Trump is a type of person that's vindictive. It doesn't matter what position you serve in. Once you step out of line, so to speak, and once you speak out against him, forget it. You're done. You're persona non grata. And he is going to do everything in his power to bring the wrath and fury your way. In terms of the wrath and fury, have you personally experienced wrath and fury since you left the administration and began speaking out against Donald Trump? Well, certainly I've been called a traitor by former colleagues of mine. I had I heard that there were speeches made in a staff meeting with the vice president about me and what I had done. Uh, you know, I've had death threats uh, when I speak out continuously about the administration. I got death threats after I was very outspoken about how egregious the Blackwater pardons were. I got, I actually got an increasing number of death threats when I publicly stated that I was very concerned about violence on January 6th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it seems to me like, um, you know, Donald Trump, uh, you know, attacking people results in real threats. And I always want to remind people of that, you know, when people are stepping out and uh, turning against the president, there are consequences for those people. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to hold Donald Trump accountable for much of what he has done. Um, and, you know, even in his own party, for example, Senator Jim Inhofe told a local newspaper uh, he has never seen Pence as angry as he was on Wednesday. So maybe we finally got around to a place where Mike Pence is among this group of folks who see the president for what he is. Do you think Wednesday's events could be a final straw for your former boss? Do you think it was a final straw for Mike Pence? Well, I certainly agree that I have never seen the vice president show anger like that publicly. He is a man who holds his cards very close to his chest. He is very careful about how he portrays himself and how what he says about the president. So that was definitely a first for me as well to see him this upset. But I do think that, you know, going in and doing your job by certifying the election is one step. But he needed to do that anyways, right? I mean, there was, there, he has no mm -hmm. power to overturn the election. I mean, so let's just keep that in the back of our heads. But he needs to do an additional step and he needs to do what's right. And he needs to be doing everything he can to remove this man from office because he is dangerous. He knows this firsthand. He has lived it. I lived it. We've all seen him do reckless things, right? We are, you know, we stood behind the press briefing room when the president talked, you know, told people that they should inject themselves with bleach during the pandemic. We heard him downplay the pandemic when we clearly knew that that was certainly not the case and that, you know, COVID rages on in our country. So what is it going to take finally to just step forward and, you know, do the 25th Amendment? Or if not, if we can't get that done, this man needs to be impeached. Yeah, I think, you know, people are of all both sides are coming around to this idea that him being in office, it's not really a partisan question. It's a national security question in terms of why the vice president is so resistant to the efforts, um, you know, to try to remove the president using the 25th Amendment. What do you think is holding him back from taking that step? There were folks in the Capitol on Wednesday 
who were overheard by reporters saying that if they saw Mike Pence, they were going to execute him. Uh, it, it seems to me that having to be whisked away by your Secret Service and put into a protective bunker situation um, might make you have a change of heart. And I, I don't understand why still today he's not in support of removing a president who incited people to come kill you, potentially. No, it's terrible. And the thing about that is, is that all of these people think that they were doing the right thing. They consider themselves patriots. Let's remember that. So these are all people who think that they were fully in their right, who think they're fully in the right to be calling for the assassination of a sitting vice president because they are honoring number one, Donald Trump. And so this movement is not fading. And that is my fundamental concern about all of this. You know, when Donald Trump, even if he gets impeached, even when he's not in office, this entire movement of people exists. It's been enabled. It's been empowered. And it's not going away anytime soon. So for Mike Pence, I think right. the question for him that he's probably struggling with is what part of the base is this of the Republican Party? Because right now it has been, it has been the Trump Republican Party, right? It's not a, a, a Republican Party of moderates. It is a party of extremism right now. And so looking forward, if Mike Pence, you know, wants a political future, I think that's the calculus. It's a question of, is it the Trump Republicanism? And he wants to stay in line with that if he wants to, you know, run for president in 2024. And I think that's probably what's going through his head. But at this point, you got to do what's right for the country. Yeah. I agree. But also, it's, it's almost even more basic than that. You better hope you're here for 2024, right? I mean, what happened this week could, could have potentially led to members of Congress, including the vice president, being physically harmed or assassinated. And I feel like your political calculations might want to take a back seat to living, being alive, being here, um, and, and all, also the life of your staff and the other, your fellow uh, members of the American government. It just it's, it seems like everybody's like, well, what about the base and what about the next election? And I, and I feel like at some point the questions need to become different and not in the political context. But I want to pivot um, because you are an expert in homeland security <laughs> and in, in counterterrorism. Um, and you have a background in you know, understanding these extreme right wing groups, monitoring these groups groups um, and advising officials on how to handle it. It feels to me like there is still a lot we need to learn about how organized Wednesday's events were and which which of these extreme militia groups were involved. Um, when you watch it, wa watch it on TV, what were your first thoughts about how organized potentially this was with militia groups and the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys? They all have weird names, but uh, they they are serious and potentially violent. Well, look, I'm going to be honest with you. I was preparing my own household and my own safety for me and my family, knowing that January 6th was approaching because I knew that the threat was going to be high. And so these groups have been communicating. They've been on chat groups. They have specifically been saying that their plan was to storm the Capitol. And they were going to attend that rally and they were going to do it in honor of the president. So I think there needs to be a full investigation and the people who were complicit in this, and I mean this seriously and honestly, they need to be held accountable because the scenes that I saw from the media footage and the coverage of the security perimeter of the Capitol and the force protection around it were astounding to me because it looked like it was just any other day. And look, I lived Lafayette Square. I was there. I was sitting inside the White House. I walked around the grounds that day. I had seen the White House looked like a fortress. It looked like the days right after 9-11. There was walls, there was fencing, mm -hmm. there were layers of police everywhere. There were layers of cops in riot gear and all these forces around the Lincoln Memorial. I mean, I drove past all of this, right? And saw it firsthand. Where was that on January 6th? And these memos from the Pentagon that I saw being reported earlier today, where they were gonna limit the riot gear for the National Guard when they finally decided to approve it, right? When the, I believe the vice president weighs in. I know Chris Miller. I know the current acting secretary of the Pentagon, right? Right now. I've worked with him. He was a senior director for counterterrorism at the National Security Council 
before he went to the National Counterterrorism Center and before he went to the Pentagon. He knows better. I can tell you 100%, all of these people know better. So do you think, the last question in the last minute is really uh, I, maybe a hypothetical one, but do you think they potentially did it on purpose by not providing the necessary supplies? Was this a directive from the White House? I mean, what you've worked with these folks. What's your, what, what do you speculate the reasoning could have been uh, in terms of not getting the National Guard, for example, or the riot gear that you mentioned? Yeah, I think the investigations will reveal a lot more. I think there's going to be a lot more that, that we're going to learn along the way. But I will say this. I do know that there was a concerted effort within the White House to push the Antifa message last summer because they thought that it played to their favor and it would work for their reelection. And it was a law and order campaign. And so I don't put it past these people that they certainly were planning and they did not want to push back on the storming of the Capitol by their supporters, and they were going to let this happen, and it was enabled. Olivia Troy, we'll have to leave it there, but I would love to have you back as this investigation goes on and uh, glean all your expertise. Thank you so much for being here tonight, uh, as always, and stay safe, please. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.